Now we're going to move to cyberspacewar.com. White House prepping national internet identity authentication plan. This from FierceGovernment.com. The White House plans to reveal today, June 25th, a strategy for verifying the online identity of internet users, said Cyber Czar X Microsoft Bush crony Howard Schmidt, speaking June 22nd at a District of Criminals conference. I want to make sure that the computer on the other end knows that it's me that it's interacting with. He told the audience of the Symantec Government Symposium 2010. To that end, the White House will unveil a strategy for public comment called the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace. This strategy draws on federal efforts such as Homeland Security Presidential Directive Number 12, the Bushy 2004 Presidential Mandate that federal employees carry a standardized identity card. HSPD-12 implementation strategy ended up giving federal employees a smart card containing a chip holding simple biometric information. Schmidt said we need to figure out how we get those things to work at the national level. Let's dive into a little bit more on the National Internet Identity Authentication Plan. The White House is ready to make public its plan to secure online transactions. As Federal News Radio has been telling you, Howard Schmidt, the White House's cybersecurity coordinator, has been leading this effort that would cut across the public and private sectors. Schmidt says the administration will release the draft plan this Friday. Federal News Radio's Jason Miller joins us with a sneak peek at the initial strategy. Good morning, Jason. Great to have you on. Good morning, Tom and Amy. And so what will the draft strategy address? Well, the strategy actually has changed its name over the course of the development. And right now it's called the National Strategy for Trusted Identity in Cyberspace, the NSTIC, which is a great, another acronym from the government. But what this strategy will do is come up with guidelines and actions to improve how we manage our identities. That means you, me, whoever interacts with the government and the private sector firms. Schmidt says this effort really is all about trust. So when you look at the various uh, identification processes to allow me to feel more confident about how I'm acting with the different, interacting with the organizations, individuals, or computers, I want to make sure the computer on the other end is also confident that that's me who's interacting with them. And that's one of the problems we have. Not only do we have to worry about who we're interacting with, but those on the other side, particularly we're doing business with, whether it's business of government, business of banking, business of transportation, that those computer systems have to trust that it's really us. And with the botnets we've seen, the compromised computer systems, that's been as much of a challenge as anything else. Now, the White House vetted the first draft internally, and then now the second draft is going to be vetted externally, and it's going to be offering goals and objectives around the laws, policies, programs that will be needed to improve the security of online identities. Schmidt says this could be from online banking or making purchases online or something as simple as sending a secure email. We want the identity solutions to be secure and resolute. We want to make sure that they're able to withstand intrusions, that they're indeed are tested, so if a middle, man in the middle attack takes place, that we basically don't give them the ability to do something with it. That's a new way of doing business. Quickly now at the bottom of this post, a related story from the Washington Post. Government devotes more brain power and money to cybersecurity. But quickly now as we shift into high gear on the lightning round in the last 10 plus minutes here on episode 175 for MediaMonarchy.com. We're on CyberspaceWar.com and we've got a little Napolitano versus Franklin. U.S. must balance liberties and cybersecurity. Fighting homegrown terrorism by monitoring internet communications is a civil liberties trade-off the U.S. government must make to beef up national security, said the head of the Reichland Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano. And the AP writes, as terrorists increasingly recruit U.S. citizens, the government needs to constantly balance American civil rights and privacy, blah, 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 with the need to keep people safe, neither of which they are really concerned with. We just have to note from Benjamin Franklin that those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And on to another bad news boogeyman. Joe, the independent Lieberman, tells the internet to just relax about the kill switch. 
Let me ask you on a couple of other subjects in our final minutes here. First of all, uh, you have an internet bill. It's been called the kill switch uh, bill that uh, would allow the president to to seize control or shut down portions yeah. of the internet uh, if uh, the U.S. was under some sort of cyber attack. I don't know if you've seen the internet lately, but know. there's a lot of people out there who think that what you are granting the president is absolute power to shut down freedom of speech. I mean, this is, this is just over the top. No way. And total misinformation. I, I don't know whether people are intentionally peddling the misinformation. Here's the fact. Um, Cyber war is going on in some sense right now. Our, our civilian infrastructure, the, the internet that runs the electric grid, the telecommunications grid, transportation, all the rest is, is constantly being probed by nation states, by some terrorist groups, by organized criminal gangs. And uh, we need this capacity in time of war. We need the capacity for the president to say, um, internet service provider we've got to disconnect the american internet from all traffic coming in from another foreign country or we've got to put a patch on this part of it the president will never take over the government should never take over the internet and listen we've consulted senator collins and i are proposing this bill with civil liberties and privacy experts this is a matter of national security a cyber attack on america can do as much or more damage today by incapacitating our banks, our our, our communications, our our, our finance, uh, our, our transportation as a conventional war attack. And the president, in, in catastrophic cases, not going to do it every day. Not going to take it over. So I, I say to my friends on the internet, relax. Take a look at the bill. And and this is something that we need to protect our country. Right now, China, the government, can disconnect parts of its internet in the case of war. We need to have that here too. Oh, thanks, Lieberman. They all just can't wait for that I-911 event so they can shove an I-Patriot Act down our ports. The bad update to this at the bottom of this Lieberman post on cyberspacewar.com, the cybersecurity bill clears Senate committee, and that's from the register.co.uk. Quickly to the DEFCON 624, more leaks and more lawsuits with a follow-up on something we covered last week where Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers says that the U.S. might assassinate Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. I think it's worth mentioning a very new and ominous development in our country. Uh, I think he would not be safe even physically entirely wherever he is. We have, after all, for the first time uh, that I ever perhaps in any democratic country. We have a president who has announced that he feels he has the right to use special operations operatives against anyone abroad uh, that he thinks is associated with terrorism, that he suspects of it. And uh, that includes American citizens. One American citizen has even been named. Now Assange is not an American citizen. But I, I listen to that with a special interest because I was in fact the subject of a White House hit squad in November on May 3rd, 1972. A dozen Cuban assets were brought up from Miami with orders, quote, quoting the prosecutor, to incapacitate Daniel Ellsberg totally.